Welcome to another Word Defibrillator to kickstart your day with I, Sean Collard. So, Larry, this is a revelation. I don't know if you've ever had scriptures that you've waited so long. You, it's so powerful and such an impact in your life that you go to God and you go, oh, gee, thanks. I've had to wait like 50 years to hear this. If I learned this 25 years ago, do you realize my life would be totally different? And this was one of those scriptures about a year and year and a half ago. It impacted and shifted my world in quite an amazing way. And it's one of those scriptures that when you look back over your life, you go, oh, all of a sudden it makes tons of sense. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. So the, the title is, you, there's not a problem with your faith at all. Because you have no problem with your faith. And it comes out of a scripture where you've heard it before, and there's a whole commotion going on. This is Mark we're, 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 we're Mark 9, and it's from about, uh, let's say, from about 14. So there was a whole uh, crowd, and everyone was talking, and, and there was a big kind of commotion going on. And then Jesus said, what are you, ask, what are you guys arguing about? And a man in the crowd came out and said, Teacher, I brought you my, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit, that has robbed him of speech. We know the story. Wherever it seizes him, it throws him on the ground. He foams at the mouth, ga mouth, ganashes at his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Jesus doesn't come with a calm answer. His answer is, you unbelieving generation. How long shall I have to stay with you? How long shall I have to put up with you? Bring me the boy. Okay. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So they brought him, and when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has it been like this? From childhood, as often they've thrown him into a fire or water to try and kill him. And then Jesus, he says to, him, he, he says to Jesus, but if you can do anything, please just take pity on us and help us. So Jesus, this is his answer. If you can. Everything is possible for the one who believes. doesn't say, okay, I'm going to deliver him. He says to the Father, now, if you can just believe. In other versions, he says, uh, if you, it, it's referring to, if you can just have the faith of a mustard seed. Okay. So, <laughs> so the Father immediately. Now, when a word's in the Bible, it's significant. Immediately. So this is how it works. So you are going to say, can you read that scripture there, over there? So you're going to be the Father. And I'm going to be, um, uh, sorry, you're going to be Jesus. I'm going to be the Father, okay? So you just say, if you can, everything is possible for the one who believes. Okay, go. Okay, if you can, everything is possible for the one who believes. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. This is a wow, Larry. There is nothing wrong with your faith. You see, unto us, uh, all have been dealt the measure of faith, mm. not a measure of faith, the mm. measure of faith. So you have access to as much faith as I do, mm. yes or no? Oh, yes. So how many times have you really gone and prayed for something and you really felt it in your heart it was going to happen? Mm. And it was a strange. I mean, there's times where I have trusted God for absolutely the most craziest stuff and it never happened. Now, you see what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, listen, if you would just kind of believe. Now, the Father says, I have no problem with believing. I have no problem with my faith. The problem that I do have is what? Uh, uh, unbelief. <laughs> so how many times have we been in a situation and we prayed and we got all the faith in the world and we go, oh, what did I do wrong? No. You see, work it like a scale. Hmm. So he, he has a scale. Okay, So if there's... Like five kgs on there, five kgs on the right. It's in balance, right? Yeah. You can't have it like that. No. The one's got to be one's got to be the other. For, and it doesn't. It mustn't be unbelief. <laughs> but this is what Jesus says: If you just have a mustard seed, more than unbelief. More than unbelief. Awesome. So here I am in church one day, sitting up, okay, and one of my sons brings his mother in, and. You can imagine what it must be like at my church on a Sunday. Um, it's not normal, but the son, been with me for a long time, brings mm. his mother from a conservative church 
to meet that guy and who's like a father figure mentor in his life. And the mother walks in and we and I'm busy setting up. So it's like a quick hi, hello, want to show a bit of value. And she says hi. And then as she turns, she's like stretches for her back. Mm. So I go, What's wrong with your back? So she goes, Um, I've had this kind of sickness in my back. I think it's something to do with the spine crumbling and that kind of stuff. So I go, oh, let's just pray for it quickly. I stop in the conversation because what? I'm busy. Put my hand on her back. And this is all I say. Be healed in Jesus' name in a quick pattern. And then I turn around and I go. She's standing there going, oh, is that it? I thought this is supposed to be one of those <laughs> kind of shunda. Wow moments. Yeah. Well, my moments, like a half an hour of prayer, the whole church. Mm -hmm. land. It, I was too busy. But here's a crazy thing. A couple of months later, she pulls it back. She goes to the doctor and she, the doctor looks at the x-rays and he goes, mm, I can see what's wrong with your back. And she goes, yeah, I've had this disease, sickness for a long time and my spine and everything. And, and he goes, no, no, it's just a muscle tweak. She says, no, no, no. It's this, that. He says, listen, according to your x-rays, I don't know what x-rays you have at home, but according to this, you've never, ever, ever had a problem with your spine. Then she suddenly goes, oh my gosh. What happened? what happened? So that moment, here's mm. a crazy thing, Larry. Normally, I'm going to hang around and I'm going to carry on praying until I feel. But that day, I had no time. So there was no time for unbelief. Belief, yeah. All I had, pure faith. Pure faith. My pure unbelief faith. had no play in that moment yeah. because I was too busy. You so, acted almost instinctively. Totally. And totally. my unbelief couldn't come back and unbalance my faith. So when it comes to situations that we are in today, mm. I want to encourage people to understand that it's not a problem with your faith. Yeah. How many times have I trusted God to the nth degree, but I, my unbelief has talked me out of it? Awesome. Thank you. No, Larry. Thank you.